what is going on guys and welcome back to the next iteration in this davinci resolve course i have a very exciting topic for you guys today today we're going to be learning about the bread and butter effect the effects that i actually use on the regular basis that really make my videos stand out and make them really really cool okay so without further ado let's go ahead and jump right into the software and let's get into some of these effects one of the major major effects that i want to talk to you guys about and uh it's probably one of the probably the most important ones is actually something called noise reduction noise reduction basically takes very noisy grainy footage and makes it really smooth if you're wondering what that is okay noise reduction is actually really really nice and i wish that i had a very noisy uh image to show you guys maybe i do let's actually go to one of these darker shots uh yeah none of these are probably gonna be too noisy maybe this one but I think the screen is going to probably be too small for us to actually see the noise because the FX3 shoots really, really well in low light. So I actually don't have a good camera example to show you guys. I'll go ahead and just at least explain what the noise reduction does and kind of show you. So let's go ahead and select it and drag it and drop it onto our clip. Now, if you click on your clip and go over here to the inspector side, you'll see now it says open FX portion of the clip. And then basically you have this luma and chroma threshold that you can use to soften and sharpen or soften and remove noise accordingly okay just keep in mind that the more you do this the more taxing on your computer it will become so be very very careful about noise reduction in fact i wouldn't turn on until the very last minute or at the end maybe use an adjustment clip to put it on the top of everything uh, at the very last second okay and uh, d flicker is going to actually try to remove any of the flickering elements in your video uh, this is actually not a good example probably my wheel one was actually really good when my light on my one wheel was flickering yeah, so this might actually be a really good example where you can see flickering right here. Uh, let's actually take everything off the timeline and let's go ahead and bring that back. And let's put this on loop mode so we can play in a loop. So if I hit play, right, that is pretty smooth as you guys can see. But if I go up here to the effects section and click on clicker off, de -click, flicker off, now you can see that it's flickering a lot more and then back on yeah just a little bit better and obviously you can go ahead and expand this out and make these a lot better and you can even tell like how much and the type that you want okay so but you guys get the idea it removes flickering in lights okay debanding is another one and debanding is a really really good one because debanding actually allows you to shoot your video at any shutter speed um so it's kind of overpowered what that one can kind of do but either way let's go ahead and drag me with the ceiling fan again here Let's go ahead and take me here and let's go ahead and click and see there's no banding here but let's go ahead and add the banding and uh, what that would basically do is remove obviously it just made me into a watercolor painting mainly because if you go over here to the right hand side uh you guys can see that uh banding is is looking for banding so there is none in this clip so like i said i wish i had example clips where i could show you guys some of this stuff but just trust me uh when these things are happening in a clip and you put these effects on there it can help it significantly okay and of course i just wanted to show you guys i didn't want to actually give you use cases but i wanted to just show you and introduce you to all the bread and butter effects in this video all right so let's go ahead and remove that one another one that's a really good one um is on my list actually i believe it's glow yeah glow glow and relight so let's get into glow real quick and then i'll show you guys relight so glow is really cool glow is a really really cool effect as you can make things look really really cool so in fact let's go and get a nighttime shot and let's go ahead and add glow onto me here and as you can see it made the lights even more brighter than they are but if you take your spread on your glow here and crank that up some and uh you can turn your you know your gamma a certain way and then so as you can see it really made the lights more glowy and like foggy it just added a mood so before after before after okay so glow is a really really cool effect and it can really make for some really really moody scenes on to the next one what else we got on the list here relight relight is really really cool because you can actually introduce a new light source into a video clip so So you could actually create a blue light effect right onto me. And as you can see, it is adding a blue light onto my face now. So this is Relight, where it's creating a light source, a new light source in the video. So if I turn this off, you can see before, now you can see after. What else is on the list here? Um, 
motion blur motion blur is actually really really cool so let's get into something where there is actually motion all right so motion blur will add a lot more uh, blur as things move and so let's see if we can actually do that so let's go ahead and go back to here and let's type in motion blur and throw it into here and as you can see it already made everything a lot blurrier and this is really really cool if you do like this pair this with a speed ramp you can make this be really 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 intense and they do this a lot in movies uh when they do like super slow-mo or speed ramps when something goes from really slow or really, really fast to like slow and then they'll make it like be a motion blur okay so that's a really cool use but i figured that was a really good example where there's a lot of motion uh, you could you're able to see the actual difference okay so we can turn it off and now you can see how much clearer it became but now there is no motion blur okay but there is some natural motion blur due to the frame rate and things but you can enhance that okay in case you didn't shoot at the right frame rate and things like that and shutter speed okay depth map uh, let's go ahead and get into the depth map so here's my friend here we're gonna actually apply the depth map so the depth map is really really cool because the depth map allows you to isolate a subject based on the depth or how close it is to the camera lens so let's go ahead and see an application of that so here we are so now you can see the depth map actually did something let's move this to faster here and we're gonna say uh yeah sure depth map preview so as you can see it is isolating him right now from the background and we can adjust like how far and how you know close things are uh you know so on and so forth and as you can see he is pretty isolated so if we turn this off now you can see that he has been isolated from the background and this is really really cool in case you wanted to you know maybe let's say for example you wanted your background to be like blurrier right so to speak so now you can make a copy of the clip like i just did by dragging and dropping that up top take your bottom clip turn off the depth map and now this top clip is actually him by himself see so we have layers now right so you can actually now make this background even blurrier so if we go to um our open effects and we go now to like lens blur we can create some really more even more blurrier background and thus you get this kind of cool looking uh kind of look now it's called that of course that's a super rough draft but you guys get the idea um how i was able to make that or you can make the background completely a different color so you can go over to color tab and make it you know whoops i think i'm changing the wrong clip here uh you can actually change the whole color of the background so you can make it more blue you can make it more purple but you see how it's not affecting him at all so that's a really really use cool use case of the depth map all right let's go ahead and do texture pop that's really good for food so you have some food clips and you go over to texture you know obviously food has a lot of texture so you can actually add this to your food clip go over to the right hand side of course in your inspector and you can turn up the strength and then turn up your details and you can get even more details and more granular so you can really make this look just you know really 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 detailed so before after before after but as you can see right into here it actually introduced a lot of noise into the image right so before smoother after grainier right so you can then compare you can compare that with a noise reduction throw that on the top and now you have noise reduction on top of here here you have it so you have your texture pop here on top and you can stack them with noise reduction and kind of clean up some of that noise back there let's say you don't want the noise in the background you can remove the noise in the background by using the depth map with the texture pop and use noise reduction on just the background so as, so as i say you, you can start combining these effects and as you can start to see now how these all come together to really make for some really really cool different looks and vibes all right now let's say we want to add some lens flares and lens reflections so go to lens on the left hand side here let's search in our open effects again let's go to lens flare first this is actually how you can create these kind of a flare effects that you may have seen in videos before personally i like the uh, i think it's the mr mir yeah this is the one that i usually like and i feel like this one is like the most normal of all the different flares okay now you need to be able to move that flare and so the way you can kind of move that flare around is actually if you go here to your different modes you can actually go to open FX mode 
and now you can actually move this around and tell where the flare is you can even animate it and do all kinds of things so for me i'm gonna actually put it like over here because it makes sense because that's where a light source is coming from and now you see we have a lens flare and what's next lens reflections lens reflections are really really cool here we have my friend here eating uh and as he, there are already lens reflections in real life as i'm shooting through a window but if you go to the effects side and go to lens reflections which is right underneath it you can now start to see what it will do to the image and boy it added a lot more lens reflections as you can see scattered purple all over the place and of course you can go over here and kind of play with this and kind of calm it down a little bit but the cool thing about lens reflections is as your camera and things moves it also moves too so it really kind of adds this emotional vibe to your footage so uh let's kind of do this and you can kind of get into the different colors you can colorize it however you want um you can talk about the different uh reflection types as you can see the the color right now is purple you could make this very very yellow and now it became yellow or you can make it white and now it became white okay so a lot of different things i knew i just dumped a ton of things at you guys a ton of different things um but that is pretty much the bread and butter um you know effects and those are the ones that i really use a lot there are a lot more but i just want to at least introduce you to them i didn't want to get into like use cases and things too much i just wanted to just show you them and you start playing with them and know that they are ones that you're going to use on a regular basis so either way guys i hope that that was very interesting and very cool and fun things that you can do your footage next we're going to start getting into um I think I'm going to skip this fast editing alternatives and things like that for right now. I think we're going to get straight into like the color tab. I think you guys are getting ready for the color tab. And as you can see, we have some more like courses where I'm going to get into like the depth map by itself. For example, it's its own course. But I just wanted to give you a quick overview and a highlight of all of these today. And then after that, we're going to try to get into a little bit of some Fairlight. And then I'm going to start showing you guys some settings on how to export your videos. And then you guys are pretty much on your way. Like that is the end of this like main beginner course. Okay, so all the beginner stuff with a little bit of some advanced sprinkled in to really make you a really good editor right out the gate. Okay, so either way, guys, I hope you guys are having a great evening and I will see you guys in the next video. See you guys.